In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a reactive flowable object, so a Rx flowable object, to live data so that it can be fed back to the UI and stay consistent with our MVVM architecture. I also want to show you an updated version of the diagram for the architecture of the app, or the dagger architecture, I guess you would say. Notice that I've added a new section in here, a new thing, I guess, to <laughs> for lack of a better word, that I'm going to call Session Manager. And this Session Manager is going to be responsible for holding the authentication state of the user. So if a user is authenticated, it will basically hold that user cached in memory in, within the application component. If they are not authenticated, then it won't hold any user. So this is going to work very similar to how Firebase authentication works, for example, how you can easily access the user that's authenticated from any class in the entire project. You can just write, you know, Firebase auth and then get user, basically. This is pretty much going to work the same way. We're going to be able to inject this session manager thing into any class in the project, and you're going to be able to see uh, what user is authenticated, if they are authenticated, and then if they're not authenticated, it will catch that and basically send them back to the login screen. So that's the overall thing that we're trying to accomplish. But in this video in particular, we're just going to work on converting the flowable to a live data object so that we can use it. And uh, we'll, we'll see more about the session manager in later videos. So the first step is actually getting the dependency to convert the, uh, the Rx flowable to a, a uh, live data object. So I'm just going to get it from I'm just going to get the dependency from the source code for the project. You can just go to dagger examples. You know the one. Choose the master branch or choose the one for this video and scroll down and the one that you want to get is let's see. We want to see this one right here. Reactive streams convert observables to live data. That is the one that you want to get. Uh, if you want to find the, that dependency online for yourself, you can just type reactive streams dependency, Android, and that should bring you to the correct place. Let's see, uh, it should be this one right here, Reactive Rx, Rx Java Reactive Streams. Uh, this should be the one, yeah, so this, this is the stuff you want here. So, but just get it from the source code, that's what I recommend doing for the project, that's gonna be the easiest. So I'm gonna go into the uh, build.gradle file for the project, and I'm going to, whoops, paste that in, and then I'm going to sync it. Now we have a way to convert flowables to live data. It's that easy. Now I'm going to go into the view model and I'm going to make some changes to this class. I'm going to delete that test request that we made in the previous video and I'm going to uh, set, set this up a little more, take some more steps to return that live data to the UI. So the first object I want to create in this class is a mediator live data object. Uh, if you don't know what a mediator live data object is and you don't know really much about live data in general, I highly, highly, highly recommend watching my MVVM courses on my website. So if you go to coinwithmitch.com, I have two uh, courses here. I have REST API with MVVM and Retrofit 2. That kind of gives you an introduction to the MVVM architecture and how to build an app that interacts with a REST API on the internet using that MVVM architecture. And then the next step is this one right here, which is the local database cache with REST API. That is a continuation of this course, but it adds a local database cache to the app. So there's uh, two kind of data sources, the cache or the REST API. Uh, and it uses MVVM architecture, um, lots, lots of really, really cool skills. I would uh, highly recommend that. And you'll learn all about the different types of live data, mediator, mutable, live data, um, because I'm not really going to be explaining it much in this course because I assume you already know and you are familiar with the MVVM architecture. Okay, so if you know the MVVM architecture, you know that the next step is we need to return a live data object of that data type that we're returning to the UI. In this case, we are uh, observing a user object. So I'm gonna call it observe user, and I'm going to return that auth user mediator live data object. Uh, next, we need a way to actually initiate the call to the API. So I'm gonna create a public void method named authenticate with ID, because that's what we're doing. We're passing an ID value and trying to authenticate. So user ID, uh, final live data, we need a user object. I'm gonna call this a source. So right now I'm creating a live data source that's uh, the source is gonna be the API call from the flowable object. 
So this is our this is going to be our conversion. This is going to be converting the flowable to the live data object. So I'm going live data reactive streams. This is the dependency that we just added in the beginning of the video from publisher. The publisher is the reactive stream. Uh, API dot get user ID pass the user ID and I want to subscribe on a background thread. So schedulers.io and I can close that off. Whoops, close it off down here. Uh, so there, there's the source. That's going to be responsible for actually doing the API call and it's going to return a live data object. Uh, but now how do I basically get this live data object set to this live data object? That's the problem. But that's why we're using mediator live data because now I'm just going to go auth user, add that source. I'm going to add a new observer and I'm going to set that value. So auth user set value and I'm going to set that user. And then after everything's done, I need to remove the source since we no longer need to listen to it. So remove source and remove it just like that. And that's going to ret return the data uh, using an Rx call and then convert it to live data and set it to our mediator live data. And it will update any observers using the set value method. Once again, if all of this sounds like magic in Chinese to you and I'm speaking a totally different language, make sure to watch my database cache course and my MVVM course, the ones that I pointed out here. If you watch those, you will understand the MVVM architecture and this will make complete sense to you. But obviously, if you don't know the MVVM architecture, this is not going to make any sense to you. You're going to be very confused. So anyway next we are going to actually go into auth activity and set up everything for uh, executing that request and getting the data into the ui so first i'm going to add a new widget it's going to be the edit text widget for uh, capturing that user id so i'm going to call it uh, edit text uh, user id and i'm going to go down into on create and attach that to its id so user id equals find view by id r dot id dot uh, I think it was user ID input okay uh, next is we need to attach an on click listener to the login button so find view by ID r dot ID dot I think it was probably login button if I had to guess set on click listener and then pass this uh, this is red because we haven't implemented the on click listener interface yet so implement the on click listener interface, pressing alt enter, going implement methods, adding the on click method. And now inside of the on click method, I'm going to write a switch statement for checking that ID. So view dot or v, v dot get ID to get the ID of the view. And then if that ID is r dot ID dot login button, we know that the user is attempting to log in. So in that case, I'm going to create a method named attempt login, which I haven't made yet and then break that switch statement. So I'm pressing Alt Enter on attempt login, going to create that method. So I'm creating that attempt login method. Uh, now inside here, we want to actually just attempt the login. So I want to do if, first I need to check if the user ID is null. So text utils uh, is empty, and I wanna check user ID get text to string, whoops, to string. I wanna make sure that that is not empty. If it is empty, I want to return. Uh, but if it isn't empty, then we need to attempt that login. So authenticate with ID, user ID, get text to string. And that will attempt, oh, that needs to get converted to an integer. So integer.parse int. So that's the attempt login. Uh, the last step is now subscribing to the observers. Once again, if you're not familiar with the MVVM architecture, that isn't going to make sense to you, but I'll just quickly run through it, kind of how it works. Basically, we have this mediator live data, which we want to observe from the UI. And we can observe it through this observe user method. So basically, you observe this, this data object, this live data object, and then any changes made to that live data object will get updated in the UI. And uh, the only time it will ever get changed is if we successfully authenticate. So I'm going to create a new method inside the auth activity. So private void subscribe observers is what I'm going to call it. And inside here, I want to call observe user because that's what we're doing. We're observing that user. I'm going to write observe, reference the lifecycle owner, which is the activity, and then do new observer. Now inside of the onChanged method, I just want to check if that user object is null. So if it's not equal null, uh, then I can just print it out and we know that the user was successfully authenticated. So just to kind of run through the logic really quickly for those of you who don't know the MVVM architecture, once again, 
definitely watch my courses if you don't, because this is going to make no sense to you if you don't know MVVM. Uh, basically, what's happening is the activity will start, the observers will subscribe. So I begin observing uh, the live data in the view model, which is which is this met through this method right here. It observes this object. Uh, when the button is clicked, it will call the authenticate with ID method right here. If that user is authenticated successfully, the value of that user will get set to the auth user mediator live data object, in which case the observers will be updated immediately. And the on changed method right here will trigger and it will print out that user. So that's kind of in general how this is going to work. Uh, now let's test it and see if we are able to uh, authenticate the user and then observe that authenticated user in auth activity. So I'm going to open up the log here because we need to see that user ID. There's the app on the screen. I need to type in a valid user ID. So it needs to be a, a, a number from 1 to 10. So either 1 or 10 is, is allowed. Uh, I can press 8. I'll just click that, click login. And there we have that email being printed out. So everything is working as we expect. And the user is being, uh, I guess, queried from the API. And then we can observe it in the UI in auth activity. Now in the next video, I'm going to improve the overall query experience. And if you've taken my database cache course on my website, the local database cache course with REST API, you know all about this already. Uh, what I'm actually going to be doing is following something that Google recommends on their best practice guide in the architecture components section of the documentation. I'm going to be building a wrapper class around the, uh, the retrofit response object that has a bunch of different states that we can use in the activity. So like when a, when the actual query is executed, it'll go into a loading state, which will then show a progress bar on the screen. If it's successful, the loading state will end and it will be a, go into a successful state. Uh, there'll be an error state. And I think there was one more state that I wanted to add. But anyway, it's, it's something that you should be adding to all of your requests, your retrofit requests or your HTTP requests in general. Uh, they recommend doing it in the best practice guide in, in the Google uh, Android documentation. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video.